Hi, welcome back to the channel. It's Amy with Notes from Past Amy. We're on the couch today simply because it's more comfortable than standing at the table. So we didn't really have anything to show you. We're just going to have a talk. Last year, Leanne Likes and Simone, Simone and Leanne, they started a hashtag called Eight Pen Questions, and this is the second year. It's come back and it's all organized. There will be another playlist, which I'll have linked. We have a schedule, so every day through the month of March and into April, there is a new video being posted at 2 a.m. Alaska time. So I will not be putting this on the, on what is it, where, premiere, where they watch and you can chat with them, which I thought would be super fun, but 2 a.m., love you, but sorry, not going to happen. I will be sound asleep. So let's get into this because I can get kind of rambly and chatty when I think people are like on the same page and interested in what I am saying, whether you are or not, that's a completely different issue. But if I think you are, I can go for a long time. So let's try to stick to the eight questions. Uh, some of them have not changed, like number one, when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? So I'll try to give you enough details to hold you. And if you want all the information, last year's video should still be public and you can visit that. I have no idea what note number that is. 39, not really sure. Not all of my notes are available publicly, and so you'll just have to look by topic. The numbers are just for my reference. So the question one, same as last year. The short version is I was ordering from Zebra Pen, and I ordered this really cool refillable, maybe 24, 36, I don't know. It's a big pack of colored pencils from Zebra Pen, and... I needed something else to get to free shipping, and I don't remember how much it was, but I had taken a calligraphy class uh, the October before, so this was in November of 2022. Actually, it was in October. We just didn't get the pens till November, and the year before, I'd taken a calligraphy class, and it was with brush pens, and I, I didn't hate them. I didn't love them, but I loved the lettering that I was learning, and so I was using them, and I saw this pack of disposable, they're not Varsity, disposable doesn't say. I think they were called Zensations. I feel like I looked for this last year too. It doesn't say, but I got the seven color pack and when they arrived in November, my son used this side, the black, red, blue. The green one didn't work, so that was our divider pen. That's why it's in the middle. And then I used these like signature gel pen colors that you can get with the stripe around it or with the colored body or whatever to tell you what color was in the pen. And these are the three colors that I always liked getting. I don't know that I ever used all of a pink pen because the pink is like pink. Um, but the purple one, of course, was the first to go because I love purple. And then depending on what kind of tealy aqua color they had in their aqua pen, that would be the second to get used up. Like I said, I don't know if I ever actually used a full pink pen because I have very sensitive eyes and I just feel like I need sunglasses for the pink ink. Now these worked really, really well, except the green one, which I said doesn't work at all. It might now, if I would give it a little TLC now that I know a lot more than I did um, last year at this time when I was four months into the hobby. But once I got the non-disposable kind, we started with a couple of Jinhao X750s and a bottle or two, my first two bottles of ink I ordered off Amazon and the pens because I didn't know where else to go. And it was Platinum Carbon Black and Waterman's Serenity Blue. Funny thing is, I didn't really know anything about these. And the more I watched videos, the more I knew you couldn't just flex them and get that calligraphy style writing that I originally thought of when I ordered the pens. So I ordered the Platinum Carbon Black to refill the brush pens that I was using. And then I ordered Waterman's Serenity Blue because what else is there for ink, black and blue, you know? So I ordered blue and then... It's all down here from there. <laughs> oh, what did I press? I'm at Walmart now. Hold on one second. Going back to my video. Favorite inks in the beginning. Well, those were the first two inks I got. What are my go-to inks now? Those were not my favorite inks. They were just the first two we happened to purchase. I still use them some, not like a lot, but they I can't say they were favorites. When I found out that there was pink ink and glitter ink and teal ink and like all of the colors, uh, I, I ordered all of the colors. Last March, I put in a huge ink order 
and I got half a dozen shimmer tastics from Diamine. Probably have 20, maybe more like 30 of those little 30 mil bottles. Because when you order them from quilt pens, they're under three dollars. So that was a really good way for me to build up standard colors: a red, a green, a yellow, blue, like blue velvet, blue. I know I have Waterman Serenity Blue. I mean, I had that before, so those are very close. Did I need both? No. Did I know that at the time? No. So I have those standards, and I can mix them together. So whenever I can't find a color that I think was going to be perfect, or you know, I thought was going to be the one, I can just mix it together. Now I do have like actual favorites straight from the bottle. That's the ink I use, and that would be stuff like Golden Sands. That's a shimmer tastic. Um, oh, what are the, the Shimmer Tastic Blues? I have Blue Lightning and there's another one and I actually prefer the other one more. I've just used the Blue Lightning more recently so that's the name I'm remembering. Go look it up. It has blue in the name. Is Arctic Blue? Oh, that's going to bother me. <laughs> it's not the one from the Inkvent. It's from the Sh Shimmer Tastic line. That one I love. Tropical Glow. Oh, I love Tropical Glow. And I've been playing with Frosted Orchid, adding some to it, like some pink, to make it not quite so dusty. Because I thought I would like that in my inks. I don't. The Rose Gold Antiqua is too brown. I've been playing with it to make it more pink. I love the Rose Gold Shimmer, but especially on some papers versus other papers, it's just too antique for me. So, yeah. Did I answer that? What are my go-to inks now? The Diamine Shimmer Tastic line. If I had to pick ink, one brand, it'd be Diamine. And if I had to pick one line, Shimmer Tastic. Although I'd have to give up my fine and extra fine nibs. Oh. Good thing that's not a question. Number three. How have your ink and pen cha taste changed over time? Well, I've touched on this too. Um, I thought I was going to like the more complicated, moody colors. I don't. I just don't. There are three pinks I am wrestling with right now. Birmingham's Magnolia Mirage, Halekin Edelstein's Rose Quartz. What is the other one? I feel like I have it inked right now, too. But they all are a bluer, pale pink, which I love. And in writing the script, it's beautiful. I adore it. But I use my pens for coloring a lot, usually then tangle. And when you color in, it gives a dirty look to it which I am not a fan of, so I'm working through that right now. But I thought I would like those moody colors. I just, I just don't. Maybe it's because we just came through winter and I need those brighter, happier, but not neon colors. I don't know. But that's where we are. It's March, so not dirty, not gray, not brown tinted, just happy colors. Are there inks and pens I have yet to try but would like to? A couple spring to mind. I would like to try a Monarch nib. The pens themselves are too small. But just to see what it's about. Same with the M1000 nib. I would like to feel a Visconti Homo Sapiens. That's the, the size where I'm like, oh, yes, I think that would be good. I had another one in mind and I've lost it. I love custom grinds but I love fine nib as well. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm doing a Zentangle, I just want a regular round fine nib, maybe extra fine, generally fine. Although if I'm using shimmer, maybe a medium, or I'm not really a broad girl, a medium. <laughs> I can tolerate a couple of mediums. But generally for Zentangles, I just use fines, and I have two extra fines, so sometimes I use them too, depending on what color ink I want. But just for writing, I love Cursive Italic, or I have a Perspective Grind from Gina at Custom Nib Studio. I have a Ryan Krusak Architect. I love different nibs and experiencing what those offer and using them for different things. Like I just got a Platinum 3776 Ultra Extra Fine, and that's where I'm using my Carbon Black. And it's great. It's fantastic. I love that combination. It's a little bit gray coming out of the nib which is exactly what I wanted. 
it's a nice fine line, so it's going to replace my microns, which are about to run out, which is why I got it. I like prioritized it on the list and then it just happened. The next week after I decided that was going to be one of my next purchases, came up on Virtual Pen Show, uh, that Instagram page, and I wasn't first in line when I first messaged, but then it's like, well, if the other one falls through, I'll let you know. And that evening, hey, you still want it? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> so uh, I have that now. I have a soft pilot nib. It's a fine medium. So I'm experiencing that. It's basically a semi flex. I've tried the extra fine Yovo flex, the Omniflex. Um, working on experimenting with a Noodler's Flex pen. I've got a couple of FPR Ultra Flex nibs and semi flex, but let's be honest, I never use those. So I just took them out of. I still have one in the pen because it has a beautiful purple ink in it. So I'm going to use that up. But I like trying nibs. They don't always work out. I did sell my journaler nib because we just, we weren't getting along. It's like the Sierra ink and the um, ancient copper, two of my first inks. I tried, I tried, and now I use them. I don't actually use ancient copper, but I use Sierra in an ink mix or two. And so I'll be keeping it just for that purpose because I make some really amazing mixes. As in, they're amazing colors in my opinion, and I love using them. So Faux Dark Lilac, Blue Lightning, those are, oh, Maleficent, I love Maleficent. Those are probably my top three colors that I've made. And those are my names for them. It's usually diamine inks mixed together, sometimes something else, but yeah, if you can't find what you want affordably for ink, just mix stuff together. It's super fun and you might come up with some really amazing colors. And I talked about that too long because my phone turned off. One second. Inks and pens I have yet to try but would like to. Okay, that other pen never came to mind, so I guess those others are priority. Moving on. What is my Holy Grail pen? I don't think I have one. I'm glad I went ahead and sprung for the Memento Zero Grande. Fiorchura Viola with the Fenichi nib in a fine because that actually has a Fenichi pattern on it, which I love. I love having something pretty on my nib. Maybe that's why the journaler nib and I didn't get along as well as we could have because it was just a plain gold toned nib with the border, like the oval border around it. It didn't even have the, the scrolls. So that wasn't doing any favors. But I like having something pretty. I would love to have a butterfly. I don't have a butterfly. A flower would be fine. Like a beautiful letter, like monogrammed. Sure. Like I just need something on it so that it's not a naked nib. <laughs> I have it. The Ryan Krusak has like an RK. It's very cool. I have one with a Franklin Kristoff logo on it. Okay. It's a diamond type logo, so it's on my diamond cast pen, and in my mind that goes, so it's okay. I have one with an owl on it. The Fenice pattern is beautiful. I love the Montegrappa pattern. Mm. But see, that, that's not a pen that I'm interested in getting. It's just that nib that I think is so pretty. And those two-tone pelican nibs are beautiful. But I'm not really interested in the pen itself, except for that Homo sapiens I mentioned. I would like to see what that feels like, because I'm not really interested in a heavy pen. But who knows if I'll ever even get to try that. So that's like way in the future. That might be on next year's video as well. But... I am always looking for interesting nibs and then beautiful oversized bodies because if it's just a plain pen, I'm less likely to use it. Now that Platinum Ultra Extra Fine has a specific purpose, like it's my fine liner pen. And so I use it because I need a fine liner and it works great. And I'm not using it for long periods of time. So it's okay. I wouldn't need to upgrade that body. Let's just be real. Eventually that body is going to be upgraded because I love the nib. I want it to be in a beautiful body. And then usually what happens is when I get a pen with a beautiful body, like this one's right beside me. So this looks like the Northern Lights. I'm in Alaska. So maybe it looks like something different to you, but it looks like the Northern Lights to me. So immediately I thought like Aurora, this doesn't look like a girl pen to me. This looks like a boy pen. So I looked up names. And Oran means light. So this is Oran. And that happens to 
a lot of pens. The diamond cast pen I mentioned earlier is pink. That's Barbie. It's just like a different way of identifying with my pens. They're kind of friends though, so take it or leave it. You think I'm ridiculous. I don't care. Some of my pens have names. The ones with the plain bodies, the Platinum, my new Sailor, and the Pilot Soft Nib, I got them all used, which is why I have the ones that I have. But when they get, like, they're forever match and are paired with a body that I feel reflects the nib and it's just this whole experience, then a name will come to me. That will be the name. Or I'll, like, look up a name that goes with it because I want it to have that association. But what was the question? <laughs> I'm just talking about pens now. <laughs> Holy Grail pen. Yeah. See, there are some nibs I want to try. But as far as pen bodies go, I'm always looking for a beautiful body, which that sounds weird. Don't take this out of context. Um, but there's not like an actual pen that I can just buy off the shelf, except maybe that Hobo Sigma. How many pens do I currently own? Well, I've got a few shooting stars and some preppies that I'm going to be giving to students. I've got my 10 pen Lamy All-Star slash Safari collection, which is just looking pretty. I'm not really using it. I've got a rollerball and the Estherbrook J that's just too small to use and it would be too expensive to put into an SD body and then have the adapter, adapter right, not converter. Like technically, yes, I could look for it secondhand and all the things, but the SD is not a great size for me. It's small. So maybe I'd be looking for an SD oversized, but the difference in pen size is really not that big. The grip is the same diameter. It's, it's not worth it. But it's a fun nib. It's the 2048 Falcon nib. So it's just kind of sitting there and I didn't count it because I'm not using it. But I am using my two Waterman 52 Flexes, my Waterman 92, the custom pens, the, the three new boring bodied ones, etc, uh, etc. Et I have four cases like this that travel around the house. Two are four pen. They were my first designs and now I make five pen. So I have two of each and three of them travel around down here. And then there's one upstairs with the flex pens because that's when I practice lettering when my son's doing his schoolwork upstairs. So counting all those and the ones in the cube on the desk, there's about 36. And yes, linking it to the next one, do I have a limit on pens or inks in the collection, number of feeling, etc.? That feels like a good place right now because I'm using them all-ish. <laughs> Say there's a couple... Uh, four to six, actually, it's more than a couple that are just in the cube. And if I need something, I'll pick depending on what nib I want to drop that note in or what color ink or whatever. I've got a few options there on the desk. Do I need to have all those options on my desk? No, not really. I mean, need? No, I have them. I like having them. Um, but having the pens in the cases is what I use all the time. So those get constant rotation, and I really like that. I feel like I use them a lot. Do I need more? No, I've got space in my tower, but that space is really handy for cleaning pens and having a place to dry them out. It seems like half of them will all dry up at the same time, and then like three weeks later, the other half will dry out. And not dry out. They're going to get used up. My pens don't dry out. <laughs> Or they get sold because we have a very dry climate here and so anything that just dries out I don't have patience for I just I can't live life like that so it gets moved on but yeah they, they'll they'll get used and need cleaned so we're on this rotation so when it happens you know it's 15 pens that all get cleaned at the same time and then they get put in those drawers laid out and they air dry. So I like having that space. I probably said 60 last year because that's what I have pen space for in the tower, but I like where it is now. Uh, there are those nibs I'd like to try, but I'm not on the lookout for anything else right now. I got that ultra extra fine. I got a Sailor Zoob, which wasn't on the list. It was just too good a price to pass up. Same with that soft fine medium. So I'm actually a couple nibs ahead of where I had planned to be this year at this time. 
I'm enjoying what I have. I'm using what I have. Don't really see the need for more. We'll see what happens. But at this point, I've got about 36 and I'm happy there. What would I do if another pen or ink came along? Oh, and uh, speaking of inks, I'm fine with my inks. I know I've got a ton of little bottles and probably more shimmer tastics than I need, but I use them. And those flex pens can go through ink. Stop, you never need me. So I'm fine. I've got some colors that are more unique. I've got a hundred plus samples. I'm working through them. I'm enjoying the colors. I just passed some on. It's fine. If I get more ink, I don't know that I would have been the one to buy it. Although I do keep a list in my journal of inks to keep an eye on that I've caught my eye on currently inked or on Instagram or new release, whatever. And I think I might want to add to the collection. It's a lot of diamine, love diamine. There's a couple of Roaring Clinger colors on there. Maybe I used it in a sample and I'm interested in a bottle. Maybe I mixed a whole bunch of sample ink and didn't have much left to use as a straight color. So I'm interested in <laughs> playing with it more, you know, but I look at ink as price per mil. So there's a lot of inks I don't have because of that, but you can mix ink so easily. Now, if you mix ink and it goes wrong and you put it in your pen and your pen's destroyed, like, don't blame this on me. But I've had great success mis mixing the diamine inks together. So how fun. It's amazing. And I've seen people mix the Birmingham inks. And I mean, if I'm completely honest, I don't always mix just one brand within that same brand. My faux dark lilac was a recipe on, I don't remember. I think I saw it on, an, on a YouTube comment someone's video once upon a time it was over a year ago so I don't remember where I saw it but I saved it and then last March in the big ink order I ordered the colors I needed to make it and it's not the same brand so you don't want to do that you don't have to do that but it's gorgeous it's I don't remember how many parts of Lamy Crystal Burl and one part of Diamine's Blue Velvet that's why I bought Blue Velvet even though I already had the Waterman Serenity Blue could I have tried it with Serenity Blue? Yeah, but I didn't realize they were so close and now I have both. So I'm just gonna make the recipe like it says. It's gorgeous, I don't wanna change it. It's a lot of Crystal Barrel to the Blue Velvet. So if you're making a large batch, put two bottles of the Crystal Barrel, but we are very off topic now. Uh, what was question eight? Oh, what would I do if another pen or ink came along? Okay, so that's how I handle inks. Pens, um, I have a pretty strict budget for pens. Um, I know I'm always looking for beautiful pen bodies, but these pen bodies have a very definite price limit to them. But then I also have a number in mind for nibs because basically I have to build all my pens when I want an oversized body, especially since I want it to be pretty with an interesting nib. They just don't come that way. So I'm building all my own pens. And so I have a number in mind for when I'm looking at getting a nib. And then I have a number in mind when I'm looking at getting a body. A body. This is this is Barbie. So I bought the body and I bought this nib. I have no idea if that's in focus. From what I can see here, it's not. But it's that Franklin Crispin, Christoph Diamond nib. Now this is a Nagahara Fine Crystal Metallic. Beautiful. Love it. Would it ever come on this pen? Absolutely not. But that's what Barbie is. At least in my collection. You might have a Barbie too, but that's my Barbie. This I found on Instagram. It's a witch head pen. It's my shortest pen. And it has these hilarious clown spots. And if you shut it just right, you can line them up. <laughs> which I don't prefer, so that's why it's offset now. But this has my owl nib on it, which I just think is super fun. And this is the perspective from Gina at Custom Nib City Studio. Now this is, I think this is my most expensive, no that's not true, it's my most expensive grind. My most expensive nib is the scroll nib from Hooligan Georgia on Instagram. Yeah, I didn't realize that was going to be quite so expensive when I inquired about the nib. But I have it and it breaks all my rules. I, there's two things I have in my collection that break all my rules. This isn't a question, but that's okay. I think I threw an extra one in there last year too. That nib 
from Hooligan, Georgia. That's hand engraved. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's got the scrolly thing on one side, and then there's two coming off each of the sides. And I bought it just before my brother's birthday, which was perfect because there were three of us growing up. Brother's no longer with us. We just had the anniversary of his passing um, yesterday as I'm recording this past Sunday as you see this. And so that one holds a very special place in my heart, even though it's nothing to do with him. It just reminds me of us three kids every time I see it and somehow that makes it worth it. It's just a fine nib, but it's beautiful and that one broke all the rules. The other one also reminded me of my brother. I guess I just need it to remind me of my brother when I buy it. It's a pen. It's the Memento Zero Grande and it's hands down my most expensive pen. Um, it's about three times what I usually pay for a body. Thankfully it has a beautiful nib and I knew I didn't want to search for that second hand because that was his favorite color and it just reminded me of him the first time I saw it. That would be a pen if he used fountain pens, which he probably would if he was still around now, then I feel that that would be a pen that he would like and that he would use and kind of say represented him. Yeah, let's just stop there. But those are the two times where I just broke all the rules and bought it. Other than that, much, much stricter budgets and it's just how things come to me. I have what I have. Most of it's used um, because of those limits, but then I'm not afraid to use them and do things with them, experience them, name them, take parts and pieces and make them new things. It's just how I work. So that is what it is. I think that's the eight questions. I've talked too long again, phone turned off. So we're gonna call it there. Hopefully you enjoyed. I will link Tomorrow's video is put on by Karina. Karina loves to plan. So I'll link her video and yesterday's video. I don't remember who had yesterday's video, but I'll also link the playlist. And you can watch all the videos. They're going into April, so enjoy. You can learn more about us and our settings and other hobbies. And hopefully get some inspiration. So as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time. Bye.